Good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing today? OK. <laughs> We're going to try to get a little bit more enthusiasm going here throughout the day. <laughs> it is a lovely day to be here at the fair, and I'm very excited to be here. My name is Vivian Chow, and I'm very excited to be hosting our panel of, um, with regards to the affiliate groups for the Minnesota GOP. And so today we have a great group of six panelists who are going to be um, sharing some of their experiences and their thoughts in this area. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with them, the affiliate groups are, uh, are essentially ambassadors who work to share and promote Republican values. They work specifically within different communities across Minnesota. Some of the work that they, that they do involves organizing events, identifying supporters to welcome new people into the party, and to grow party support. And in some cases, they also give a voice to people within their communities that may not be heard otherwise. So today, um, so actually there right now are a total of 10 different affiliate groups uh, within the GOP here in Minnesota. And we have representatives here from four, as well as, as well as two other guests who are able to also share some of their experiences and thoughts on these as well. So um, since they are going to do a much better job of introducing themselves than I am, I'm going to allow each one of them to um, state who they are, their, their association with an affiliate group or how they're involved within the, uh, within the party overall, um, as well as to share some of the key objectives of the group that they're with. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming out. This is going to be tangled and not reach everybody, so let me untangle this now. My name is Eric Lucero, and I'm the state representative for the great cities of Albertville, St. Michael, Otsego, Hanover, and the Wright County portion of Dayton, which is where I live. Now, Dayton pre-existed, long pre-existed Mark Dayton. So we're looking forward to him getting out of office so we can reclaim the reputation of our great city. Uh, I am currently serving, yes, exactly. I'm currently serving in my second term, running for my third term uh, for re-election. And the committees I, ha I serve on are public safety, transportation finance, and civil law. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Yelmus Yang. I'm the endorsed Republican candidate for House District 42B, which is uh, cities of Venice Heights, Little Canada, Jim Lake, part of Shoreview, and Roseville. Um, besides that, I am a youth minister, and those are my students out there, and just take care of them and try to get our uh, community, our Hmong community, especially Hmong community, out from poverty, out from social programs, and get them to achieve the, uh, the American dream, so. My name is uh, A.K. Kamara, and I've been uh, involved with the party since 2006, came in as a college Republican, and found a, a good home for myself as I was kind of searching through to figure out exactly where I belong politically. Um, I've been involved since that time of helping at various levels throughout the state within my local basic political operating unit. And really my focus has been just to try and bring together people that are considered non-traditional. I have tattoos. Uh, my dad is from Sierra Leone, West Africa. And so I really don't fit necessarily the traditional Republican model of what people kind of from the outside say. So I just like to get out, be involved. Whenever I run into someone, I try and explain how our values connect us more than our skin color or even our specific communities. Um, but I also think it's important to be able to expand upon those communities. And so I've been involved helping the party from a kind of a top level, um, but from a grassroots perspective as well, just trying to put in my input and, and help bring some affiliates to the table. So that's me. Good afternoon, I'm Famatia Muawaini. Um, just like AK, I also have tattoos. These are traditionals and I was born and raised in Samoa, so I, this represents, I'm also a chief in, in our island, so I'm blessed to be here. I am the president of the East Metro Republican Women. It's a club that I started last year after finishing uh, with MAPS, um, class, which is awesome. And I'm also a campaign, I'm currently a campaign manager as well, so it's, um, alongside also owning businesses. So I am happy to be today um, part of the panelists. Thank you very much for having a um, representative from us. And also, I also represent the Asians, um, Polynesians, so also part of the councils for the Asian Pacific Council as well. So thank you. Hello, uh, Rick Aguilar with the uh, Hispanic Republican Assembly of Minnesota. Been in, uh, active for about 25 years. And our job is to reach out to Latinos, 
uh, talk about Republican values, get them to vote for Republican candidates, and also recruit uh, candidates who run for office. And uh, we're really proud to say that uh, a few years ago, Eric Lucero became the first Latino Republican House member. Eric Lucero. <laughs> and not only that, but, but John Kosnick is the second Latino Republican House member. And somebody said, well, John Kosnick isn't Latino. I said, well, he was born in Colombia and adopted. So we're very uh, pleased to be here. And by the way, in 2016, 30% of all Latino voters in Minnesota voted for Donald Trump. Yeah, that's impressive. No. Uh, my name is uh, Abdi Mohammed. I am a part of the Somali American Republican Affiliate Group. Um, we're hoping to expand actually to African immigrants, uh, people of African background, uh, you know, folks in the Nigerian community, the Ghana, uh, Guyanese community, um, Ethiopian and others who are entrepreneurial, who are uh, traditionally, you know, uh, oriented towards their faith, whether it's Christianity or my background being Muslim. Uh, and, and really it's, it's to um, kind of tie in the immigrant story of seeking a better life and seeking opportunity to what the GOP offers, you know, the Growth and Opportunity Party. So I'm um, hoping to do that with the Republican Party here. Thank you all very much. Looking forward to hearing a little bit more from all of you. So um, I'm going to start by asking questions, but I'm also going to leave a lot of time for all of you to ask questions. So this will be a great opportunity if there's anything that you would love to ask any of our esteemed panelists up here. Start thinking about that now, and we'll give you an opportunity to, uh, to share those questions in a little bit. But I'm going to start with the first question. And it's something that a few of you have uh, kind of hinted about. And the question to you is, why are you a Republican? And how do you think that the work of the affiliate groups helps to share that message with others? So actually, AK, since you kind of started with that, I'm going to hand it over and get you started. So for me, um, I grew up in low-income subsidized housing in North Dakota, a place that we affectionately called the welfare square. So uh, my politics did not definitely grow up in a Republican base. But one of the things that I realized when I was growing up is that if I ever wanted to be able to move out of the current station that I was, I'd have to put a lot of hard work and effort. And as I became an adult, I started to kind of look around and realize the things that were broken within a traditional Democrat model of letting other people kind of take care of you. And then beyond that, kind of making yourself feel that you're not worthy, so other people have to take care of you. So it was that determination to figure out my own path forward that started to get me interested in kind of this whole theory of people being independent, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. And that's kind of what led me into the Republican Party. Um, and it was that kind of impact of figuring out that I could make my own life that brought me out here um, in regards to being a Republican. And so those values as I started to learn more and more about the Republican Party really fueled me into understanding that as an independent person, you're accountable for your own mistakes and for your own triumph. And so you have to be out there and you have to put your best foot forward and you can't let other people determine what your outlook's gonna be and that idea of individual responsibility is what really drove me to search out what political ideologies meant and it drove me directly to the Republican Party and I think that that is the biggest thing for me. Um, and so in regards to affiliate groups, when we look at all these different groups and I'll specifically speak to the African American community, we have a, an impact that we have been lacking in as a party. And I think that when we're able to take a look at ourselves and say, if we can get that message out of independence and people taking accountability and, and not being a victim of their circumstance, but empowering themselves, that that's gonna help our community. And so I think that the affiliate groups um, have that impact with each of their own individual communities to bring out that broader message and so that for me is is kind of what brought me in and I think it's a very powerful thing that the Democrats and the other parties do, do not have. Thanks so much. I, I love that. I really do agree that with particularly when you bring a large group of people together the impact that you can make if you take that accountability really is amazing. So, um, Yelly, yeah. did you want to answer that as well? Yeah, so uh, I forgot to mention earlier that I'm actually on here on behalf of the uh, Asian American Republican of Minnesota. So, um, anyway, so back to the question. Um, the reason why I'm uh, uh, conservative or Republican is because uh, my background is ministry. Uh, and so I'm a youth pastor, uh, and, and that's where I get my politics from. That's where I, I, I'm pro-life and, and, you know, the rule of law and respect and so on and so forth. And um, being humble and, and serving, and so that's where that's my background. And uh, 
um, that's really the main reason. Uh, other reason is because um, as being Hmong, as a son of uh, Hmong uh, immigrants, uh, my my parents and then my the, our community ran away from. Um, you know, we fought in Vietnam and, and uh, ran from social religion and communism. And so to come here in, into this great country and, and be part of the socialist or, or communism group again, it's, it's, uh, it's contradicting. It's contradicting. It, it diminishes the purpose of everybody who sacrificed themselves during the war to get us here and then for, to come here and then to disrespect the, the laws and, and not respect the constitution and the founding, um, the founding fathers. And I, that's part of my reasons because the Republican Party respects history, respects its leader, respects its um, uh, constitution, the law. And I don't think the Democrat Party um, respects it. It shows that respect. And our, our community, we show respect to our elders. And you know, of course, we, we disagree, but then we show, still show uh, respect and civility there. And uh, this is the reason why I, um, I'm concerned that I'm Republican. And I found the party through my principles, not that the, not that the party found me, but I went and found the party, so. Great, I think, for, thank you very much. I think, Fumati, you wanna answer that as well? Yes, um, I would like to add to part of that question. I'm a business owner, and as far as the Republican values, as also with my standard, I would like to like see more of the less environment of government in business is, and, also, and also less taxes as well. Um, it's a huge burden for, especially for my employees as well, with their paycheck. It well, except for recently, it has been awesome. But less taxes for, and all, for the businesses and also for their consumers and also less environment of government in our business. Um, and as a representative of both um, Samoa and American Samoa, our, my heritage is also um, you know that we have a high, I think a high percentage of the militaries from, from Samoa per capita. So we have the highest um, of our population serving in the militaries. And I'm very proud to represent the Samoan in the United States and also as a immigrant and um, traveling here and became a citizen of the United States. I am proud to be um, a legal citizen and work my way through uh, starting a business and also be a part of this great nation and I am happy to pay the taxes where it deserves and also work hard for it. Uh, Thank you very much. So I'm hearing that a lot of people have been really impacted by their own personal experiences and what their situation has been and that's really impacted some of your choices and, and, and the reason that you've chosen to, to really put a lot of your efforts in this, uh, in this space. So I'm curious though, since a lot of it sounds like it's based on individual, but we're talking about groups here, we're talking about affiliate groups. Are there um, unique objectives or platforms that your group is focusing on that's actually serving, serving the, your broader communities? Well, one of the things that uh, Republicans always say when you talk about Latino voters, they always say, well, they, they share our values. And yeah, that's true. But um, one of the things that we're trying to do as an affiliate is, is uh, talk to our candidates and make sure they're talking to these communities. Uh, just sharing your values doesn't mean you don't have to market to them. You don't have to carry a message to them. You don't have to use the media to reach them. Of course you do. And I'll just leave you with the Viva Bush campaign. Bush 43 ran the most successful campaign to Latinos, getting almost 50% of the vote. Because he did that. Media buys, messaging, advocates. That's our platform. Let's not just think there are people. Let's go and do the Latino outreach efforts. Can I repeat? So for the East Republican, uh, Met for East Republican Metro Club, uh, it is an, a club under the Minnesota Federation Republican Women, and we have about nine already in the state of Minnesota. And as part of our club, it is our job for each club to educate and support, advocate for every female Republican, and we encourage anybody to step up and get involved in political, whether it's national or local issues, but get involved and hopefully that, that is the message of all our, East, um, at least our Federation Republican Women's Club, so. I was gonna just kind of touch on what Rick already said, uh, specifically being able to get out into the communities. I think that's really the ultimate goal of the affiliate groups, is to be able to bring in people um, and you know, I would say that people at their base, right, 
we like to be introduced when someone looks or sounds or has a similar experience to us. And I think that's what's important about the affiliate groups is that you're able to find people involved in certain communities, be able to bring out that message, and then having the party be able to support that message is how you're going to at least get people open to the idea. So many times when um, you go into some of these communities that we haven't been as involved in, you find that there are a lot of people with similar values. Um, but if we're not able to, to make sure that not only are our values the same, but are we able to bring candidates that can actually have that face-to-face -face interaction, you find that there is kind of this rich, deep um, area that's unexplored. So I think that that's also an important aspect too, is that the affiliate groups, their main purpose is to be able to turn out Republican voters from there, but you can't just do it just because we have the same values, right? I mean, that's, I think, the actual impact of the Republican Party. Most people, when you take essays and uh, you know you look at what people's general feelings, when you look at their values, people tend to be more to the right of the political spectrum, but yet Democrats still win. And so it all really comes back down to can we get people out in front, the people that are running for office, to be able to connect those values. And the affiliate groups, that's kind of what the purpose is, is to find ways to connect our traditional Republican values with these different communities with people that actually are out there running. That's great. And so I'm curious though, are there, are there ways that this can be done or things that these groups are already doing? I know that Rick touched a little bit on um, just getting the message out and some marketing, but um, I understand that there's also other activities and other events that are being done in order to really promote, really promote this. And I'd love to hear a little bit more about those. Yeah, so for specifically for ARM, uh, which is Asians, American uh, Republicans of Minnesota, ARM. Um, so what ARM is doing, or first kind of answer the first question is, um, uh, basically the reason why I think ARM is, uh, or Asians are, are more uh, conservative, is because of, uh, again, family value. Uh, Concert, the idea of con conservatism is, is all about family and, and the structure of family and the stability of families. And if families are strong, then, then society itself is strong. And if, uh, so, so it's all about family. And so family is, is uh, taking responsibility for each other, holding each other for accountable, and making sure that everybody is doing their job to, to, to grow. And so by doing that, then uh, you know, I think that's why uh, Asians are more conservative. Um, theologically and uh, ideology-wise. Um, and so basically uh, what ARM is doing right now is, uh, again, we're reaching out. Um, uh, yes, we're reaching out. We're doing news media and things like that, too. And we're also just do, kind of going through the traditional way of culture to do things. So like the Dragon Fest that we were at, we were out there reaching out there, uh, throwing big feasts and big banquets and things like that. You know, we're, we're doing that. And so, so basically just using the culture's a methods of, of, of gathering already and then going through there and then saying that here we're, we're here on behalf of the uh, Minnesota GOP and we're here and we're, we're spreading out a message so great Famati for, well, for our club we are doing um, door knocking so also for the candidate we do have a candidate um, that's in our club so we're help supporting her as well and also we host events that we can bring speakers in that we can learn from how can we help how can we get the people encourage them to go out and vote you know especially for this year come november 6 or starting september 21st is the early voting like how can we get people to like go out that is your voice and so through events that we're that we're hosting every month and also door knocking uh, phone calls, our club are also trying to make um, times to help out with the other candidates as well. And um, I'm planning a, uh, what do you call, um, political party that it's supposed to teach the other, especially non-involved women that are afraid to get involved. But then for, in our club, it feels like they can come in and join us like for dinner and, and just talking among other women, that's the same values and same kind of interesting features, so. So just getting a conversation started and just letting people talk. Yes. Sorry. Um, well, it's interesting. So we're, we're hoping to plan some events. Again, we're, we're moving from the Somali affiliate group to the African immigrant group and hoping to expand more into areas like, a, you know, Brooklyn Park or Brooklyn Center where there's a Liberian community and, and, uh, and, and more West African oriented. But just in my day to day conversations that I have with uh, other Somalis, it's interesting because they always say, you know, 
practically, the Republican Party is the one that lines up with our values. Again, uh, as Yale mentioned, the traditional values, more family-centric, uh, you know, more um, you know, cons fiscally conservative as well, I mean, with a, with a lot of business owners in the community. But because of the perception, right, because of the perception of the Democrats being the diverse and more engaging party, they shy away from the Republicans. And I'm, and I'm hoping, you know, as with the work that we're doing here, we can kind of counteract that. And, and just to kind of, you know, on a, on a different note, I think uh, AK was mentioning identity and, and kind of having people, you know, have a rapport with people who might, you know, share their background and their culture. It's not necessarily identity politics per se. It's just that the Democrats, I think, recognize that people see through the prism of identity in life and you can't really kind of go around that. But if you can kind of manifest that to be you take the identity, but you extract the values, right? You extract the values of the Asian immigrant community, the Christian black community, the Muslim immigrant community. They all have these kind of overarching ideas, um, but they have different identities. So I think there's something there in terms of really reaching out to people on that kind of uh, personal level. So. Great, thank you so much. I'm gonna turn it over to see, do we have any questions from any of our audience members? Would anybody like to ask anything? Ah, we do. Um, I'm gonna ask you to actually come up here. And sir, what is your name? My name is, uh, my name is John Werner. I live in Ramsey, Minnesota, and I have studied some economics, and the biggest thing, we have got a minimum, two simple, very, I, I hope you all get elected, and that everything sweeps, but we have a minimum wage for employees. Why not extend this very concept to employers and those that are self-employed? Let's say the first 20, 30, $50,000, we're not gonna tax you on it. That's your money to keep so that you can hopefully reinvest and grow your business, hire more people, and, and because most small businesses will die within 10 years. If we did this, we could turn this country into a nation of small business owners and increase the wealth in this country, and we would be in a full employment economy within a decade. Uh, I mean, I think we could. I mean, why not give a billionaire like Warren Buffett the first $50,000, but he's got to pay the full freight on the rest of it that he makes? You know, if we did this. Also, another thing. Automatic sunset laws, if you pass a law, 5, 10, 15 years, the bill dies, and it has to be redrawn. Here it is over a century or later, and we're still stuck with the 1863 Mining Act in this country. Thank you. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your comments. Uh, great point. I'm the, I'll start with the sunset. Absolutely, there are way too many... Wait, maybe you turn that one off, maybe? I... Uh, there are way too many laws on the books, uh, and there are those statutes that, that do get passed and put into law that no longer become relevant due to innovation uh, and other technology. They are no longer relevant, and in fact, they are holding back, in some instances, uh, creativity and expansion and, and businesses from growing. To your second point, me uh, speaking as an individual, I do not like the income tax at all. I do not believe the purpose of government and this is what the income tax has become. Uh, to to uh, it's become an instrument to incentivize the citizenry to to make decisions one way or the other based on benefits or or non-benefits by the tax code. I'm in favor of doing away with the the income tax altogether and relying on a sales tax. But when it comes to uh, what we do have, the income tax, uh, I hate picking and choosing winners and losers. Uh, I want to, I, one of the things that the Republican Party has been seeking is to lower taxes on everybody. Businesses, families, individuals, and one of the things, in fact, I was uh, at a forum yesterday and, and the topic of economic growth came up, and one of the, the things that we can point to is the most recent uh, tax cut that happened on the national level in December. Massive tax cut, and it passes Congress, if you recall, it wasn't even signed into law yet. It had been sent to the president, but not yet law. And even before it was signed into law, we began to see the headlines come across uh, major, re hundreds of millions of dollars by companies reinvesting in their business to grow. We saw announcements of companies 
voluntarily raising the minimum wage, not due to a government mandate. We saw uh, announcements of sending money to nonprofits and other community uh, uh, local investments that were happening, charitable organizations. Now we fast forward six months later to where we are today, we are seeing what the strongest economic growth that we have seen in a very long time. It's already at 4%, there are some projections of 5% GDP growth. Why is this happening? Because we've cut taxes, we've stimulated the economy, and capital that has been sitting on the sidelines during the Obama administration, because of the uncertainty, that ca the capital is coming flooding in through investment and we're seeing this economic growth. So cutting taxes for small businesses, for self-employed, for everybody, this is a clear demonstration that the free market is much more powerful than any government program or government uh, attempting to spend money in other areas. Just allow people to keep their money. They will make the wisest decisions. Great. Eric, thank you very much for, um, for addressing that. Did anybody else want to, um, want to speak to that? I just want to support that. I do like that question, which is, I, as a business owner with a um, few locations for um, fitness business, I do appreciate when there's tax, we lower the taxes, so um, more to expand, because we are going through expansions on business, and we do count on keeping that, you know, having the extra money for that, instead of you know, putting more pressure on our business when we expand it. So. So definitely, I think that there are a lot of issues. Uh, there are a lot of issues at hand, and each group is going to be is going to have a different set of concerns. So we touched on this a little bit before, but um, but are there specific platforms that some of your groups are are focusing on right now? Well, we're focusing on, we're focusing on the fact that uh, Minnesota has the worst uh, racial disparities in the country, but. Especially in education, you imagine Minnesota has always been known as a leader in education, but yet we have the worst high school outcomes for Latinos in the country, in the country. 50% of Latino kids are failing high school dropouts. Same thing with African Americans in many of our communities. And that's, a, that's an issue because Republicans are for school choice. We need to put all these options on the table. So. We're talking a lot about that, that uh, situation. It's a crisis, really, if you think about it. And I think we can all share that. Every group here has those same outcomes. So we're really disappointed in the Dayton administration, in Education Minnesota, and everyone that's been involved with this issue. Because we need to make a good, honest effort to make sure these kids graduate. Exactly. To, uh, to Rick's point, I think that uh, it's been successful in other, other parts of the country as well. Um, but when you actually dig down into the numbers and you look at the disparity that exists, the Democrats only have one, one plan, and it's always the same plan. Put more money. More money, more money, more money. But as you've seen more money go in, you haven't seen that disparity decrease. Because the reality is that people of uh, you know, lower socioeconomic status they're forced to make a choice of where to go to school, and those public dollars stay in that school district. But if you can create enough uh, openness and, and competition, then you're going to be able to drive up that disparity. I mean, if you if you look at the disparity um, within people that are having that choice to figure out where their kids are going to go to school, you're going to get a reply back from those school districts, and the ones that are failing are going to fail, but it's going to help the kids when there's more competition. And so I think it's been an issue that has been big within racial communities, especially when there's that huge disparity, as Rick had already mentioned. Um, but yeah, that's, that's something that, that we need to be able to continue to pound because parents, they're at a loss. When you go and you talk to parents, they're like, yeah, you know, my kids are stuck in the school or you know, I don't know what I, what I can do. Um, and that's really an impact that we have an opportunity to really expand upon to get people to look past just Republican and Democrat and say, well, let's look at policies that are going to help my own children. And that's what our, our best way in, I would say, is to be able to hit upon that over and over again. 
Yeah, so in regards to that, um, in, uh, the Asians, that you know, they I think in other cultures as well, I mean, we're pretty sim similar. Um, we just focus on education and small businesses, really. I mean, you know, our parents tell us to grow up and become doctors and engineers and so on and so forth. But then at the same time, uh, the, the Democrats, you know, they, they, they want to promote us to just go to college. There is no other option. If you don't go to college, you're not going to be successful. And that's not true. Statistics are showing that the trade skills market right now is hiring. It's demanding. And, uh, and the Democrats don't want to push students, like my students there, to those trade skills because they're not going to, their school funding is not going to get uh, funding. Therefore, not, they're not going to get any grants and so on and so forth. And then, you know, they're not going to get any money, basically. And so what they want to do is they, they, they uh, uh, indoctrinate our students, push them to go to college, and then they all come out in debt and they have no job. And the Democrats go, we need to get more money so we can get more jobs to these guys. But really, it was their idea of, of not wanting our students to become better than them, not having that diversity. And in regards to small business as well, they're against that. They don't want business to become um, uh, billion uh, corporations. They want, they want it to stay, stay small to no business so that way uh, government can control that. And so that's, uh, th those are two big um, issues. Uh, platforms that um, uh, we as Asians, uh, Americans are are working on is, is to make sure that we have, and that's why the, cons uh, the idea of conservatism, conservatism and the ideology behind that is is working for our culture as well as other cultures as well. So, thank you. If I could sum up the difference between the two party with one with two words, actually, it would be uh, there's one party, the Democrats, that are uh, their goal is dependency where the Republican Party is promoting empowerment. It doesn't matter who you are, what your background is, what your age is, what your goals in life are, the Republican Party is seeking to empower you through education because each and every one of us knows that if, if, a, if a young person is empowered with a good education, they are going to have more options and more opportunity available to them in life. And when they are robbed of a good education, and I feel so bad for the, the Minneapolis school district, you got students that are trapped in a failing school district. And I think if you combine the state and federal dollars, it's up, it's, it's approaching $25,000 per student. And they, and some of the graduation rates now are below 50%. And when a student is set back with such a, 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 a travesty of this magnitude, they are, make it, it makes it very difficult for them to overcome that for the rest of their life. And so empowering people through education, then empowering business owners by allowing them, rolling back the regulation and, and allowing them to keep their money so they can make decisions to grow. That's what everybody, everybody wants to do, is to work hard and then to succeed at whatever it is their dreams are. And uh, again, just promoting that empowerment and independence. Thank you very much, Eric. I um, really appreciate that because I've spent time just today asking everybody about what their individual group's platforms are, what they're focusing on, and you did a really nice job of bringing it all together to show that really, even though each group does have its own focus areas, there are so many commonalities that, are, that, that as a party every, that you're all trying to address. So really appreciate that. Um, any other questions? Does anybody else out in, the, out in the audience want to ask a question? Hi, and what is your name? My name is Karen Bauman. I'm Congressional District 4 CD or Deputy Chair. I know all of these people very well, and thank you for coming. But I do have a question about achievement gap because I was listening to a forum that Tim Walz and Jeff Johnson had, and Tim Walz said, "Well, of course we should have uh, cultural teachers in the classrooms to change the achievement gap. The children need to look up to someone that's their same color." And Jeff Johnson said, "Well, I don't look at color." because I find that discriminating. I also am a state of Minnesota employee, and as an employee under Mark Dayton, he formed groups, um, black American group, LGP. When the whites asked, can we have a little special group? He said, no, you're not the minority. So he's got some stuff going on there with discrimination. But uh, from each of you, I'd like to know, in talking to the adults um, in your affiliate, you know, in your cultures, when you go out and talk um, for the affiliate group, do you find these parents saying to, well, we need teachers of our color? Or what, what do the parents think they need for the achievement gap? So I, uh, I, I briefly worked in my school district in St. Paul Public Schools 
uh, as one of the you know tech managers, you know, helping facilitate and uh, run the itiner uh, itinerary of tech materials. So I got a good insight from the school district that I graduated from, and I think really what it is at the end of the day, I think we come from different cultures that operate on a meritocracy, right? I think with Dayton and a lot of these uh, these ideologues in the Democratic Party, they operate on this kind of social justice, redistribution of wealth, redistribution of power, you know, they, they kind of come up with these different terms that they have in their race and gender bias studies classes and then put them into uh, the real world where they're taking from the abstract and just railroading the lives of others. So I don't, I don't think that, you know, the issue of cultural competency for teachers is a big one, one enough to, you know, not prioritize the actual you know, uh, achievements in, in, in testing or, you know, whether or not uh, testing is even a, a good way of, of, you know, measuring that kind of growth. I think at the end of the day, what was said here before is having that option of school choice and even working a way to get school vouchers in there. $25,000 a student to, to go to a failing school district, at least a fraction of that can be taken into some kind of charter school or an option that, you know, parents can have. Uh, but I personally haven't heard anything where you know people are demanding this. I think it's coming a lot from the left-wing ideological paradigm that they come from, and then projecting and imposing that on us as their kind of social experiment. Well, on the other hand, uh, we had Minnesota's the, uh, teachers, uh, Education Minnesota, and all the different unions. They were overwhelmed when the demographics when the, dem the demographics changed in Minnesota, they were overwhelmed. You know, they're not used to these multicultural communities. So I'm in favor of having a diversified teachers groups, more Latino teachers. You know, these numbers aren't going away, folks. This, the, the, the numbers that we're gonna have in this state, and that's another important part of the affiliate. The change in votership here in Minnesota is going to change dramatically. Republicans are going to be winning in the future. They better understand every one of these communities and how to get those votes, or those Democrats will eat us up. So we better start work learning. And I, I'm for more teachers of color. I really am. I think these kids have a comfort level. They like to go there and see some of their own people teaching. And why not? It's a great idea. Thank you. I think that Democrats have been really um, put themselves up there that they are the favorite multicultural um, for, I would say, but that be known. But Republican Party, as I mean, take for example myself. I am a proud Republican woman. I moved from Samoa here, making a living as a small business um, owner, and I didn't say, "Hey, give me food, give me this." I worked my way onto it, so it is possible for us to come to the United States and work as hard as it, you know, everybody else that was even born and raised here. Now as a part of diversity group, I will agree with Rick that we do need um, some sort of group because it makes us feel comfortable. I think that's a way that we share our culture, but that doesn't mean that we changed the way this country was, was found and formed. Now, I wasn't coming here and expecting that I will go to school or attend a church with a Samoan pastor or a Samoan teacher. I came here to knowing that through life I have to learn English. Um, I have to whatever, like, obey the, the laws and the of the United States. Now, that doesn't mean I'm forgetting my roots, but it is we obey what we have to live here for. So I, I think you have a really good question, Karen. Um, and obviously each of us, right, um, especially within the spirit of the Republican Party, we're all individuals, we all have our, our own thoughts on it. But kind of to the question that you were asking, um, in, in the broader sense, yes, it's important to be able to make sure that we have a wide set of people that are qualified, okay? I'm not, I don't think that it, it's smart to take people that are unqualified and stick them in a position just because they have a certain you know, gender or race or whatever it might be. But yes, I think it's important to emphasize that we are looking for people of a wide, uh, diverse uh, set. But I think it is more important at the end of the day to have qualified good teachers, right? If you have qualified good teachers and when you look at the disparity of, of what's going on, we can't just pretend that there's not things that exist within certain communities. 
in regards to the actual community life itself. I mean, it starts at such a, a deep level. If you look in a lot of uh, communities of color and you look at a city level and you look at a governmental level and you see the policies that are driving things forward really do come from this kind of social justice, you know, people are just victims of their situation or circumstance. So I think it's it's a kind of a deeper question of what can we do. Um, I mean, it comes from an individual perspective. We have to be able to get people out there understanding. I think that the communities themselves, right, what we as affiliates, we need to be able to empower communities to take control of their future. Stop relying on other people from outside of the community to come in and fix the things that you have. In our neighborhoods, right, com these communities come together to solve problems. And that's what we need to encourage. Too many times when you talk to parents, I think that a lot of them figure that the government will just fix things. Oh, don't worry, the government will fix it. The government will fix it. When we come in with a message of like, has the government fixed it yet? And you're like, no, going on like 60, 70 years. It's like, well, what can you do within your community to empower yourself and to take responsibility? And I think that that message, which the Republican Party holds, that people take personal accountability, get involved. It doesn't mean that someone else solves your problem. You get together and you solve your problem together. But from a school perspective, having that open enrollment or having a voucher system even better that you can help create these pockets that allow competition, that is something that we can do, but I think it's more important to also get out there with that message of telling people to empower their own communities. Don't rely on other people to fix it because they never will, because they don't understand. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so, so to answer Karen's uh, question, um, no, I, I don't think in regards to uh, do we need, like, for instance, specifically Asian teachers so that Asian kids can learn and, and uh, be assimilated with them. No, I don't think so. I think that's, uh, I think that's crazy. I think that's, uh, that's out of the, this world. I don't think we need that. Just, I mean, just take a look at myself. I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with, without an Asian teacher. I mean, do I need an Asian teacher in my life to, to become successful? I, I, think that's, I think that's out of the question. It's just crazy. Um, no, I mean, sh sure. Should we have a diverse diversity of uh, diverse of uh, teen uh, teachers and so on and so forth? Yeah, it's to show that our students that hey, you know, I can grow up to be, become a teacher too, and and stuff like that. But to to the point where I need a specific uh, cultural, ethnic group teacher to to become successful is, is is relevant. It's not relevant. And then not only that, in regards to achievement gap, um, I think part of the reason is because uh, the reason why there's achievement gap here in Minnesota is because. Um, me personally, I think it's um, the teachers union. I think they control a lot of the uh, the agenda. I think they, they control a lot of the education agenda. They get billions and billions of dollars from teachers who are working hard just to just to make. It. I mean, it, teachers don't make it don't don't make that much. And so here, these teachers union saying we're going to fight for you, but really they're fighting for the agenda. They're indoctr again, they're indoctrinating our students to to think of a certain mindset and then not have it and then and then here comes a teacher and you and say we're saving you and and they 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 control the agenda and so i think that's the reason that's why i'm conservative because of, of of school choice uh, again with what abdi was talking about the vouchers and uh, representative lasaro here um school choice um you know you can go to any private school or public school that whatever the school wants to set up and our students i grew up in st paul um and sure it's not the best but i i got what i got but i'm actually proud that i didn't go up in minneapolis or Opportunities, opportunities would not be there, and so being up in St. Paul, and, and if I, if my parents can send me up to White Bear Lake, you know, White or, or Roseville schools, I think you know the opportunity would be a lot more vast than, than now. So that's why I think. On the topic of uh, the teacher having the same skin color as the students or the same ethnicity, I couldn't put it any better. That's crazy, and in fact, it's the antithesis of what we have been fighting for decades for, which is to look past what a person looks like and instead focus on what their values are. And so those that are promoting this, this conversation, exactly, those promoting this, this idea that the, the teacher needs to have the same skin color, again, it's taken us decades backwards. Uh, on the topic of uh, uh, having qualified teachers Another antithesis of qualified teachers is the teachers union. Education Minnesota, what is, what is the purpose of a union? It is to fight for its members. So what Education Minnesota is doing, it's fighting to protect and shelter its members from the consequences of poor teaching. And it's not 
putting forward what's in the best interest of students. Education Minnesota and other teachers unions are on the, on the, the forefront of fighting against choice in education, fighting against accountability for teachers. It is incredibly difficult to fire a teacher, incredibly difficult. And so that is something that we absolutely need to change all around. So we've sp uh, spent a lot of time on today because we do have a very diverse uh, panel talking about the multi, a uh, lot of the multicultural issues. I do want to point out though that there are other affiliate groups that are not multicultural, and those include the um, Republican Labor Alliance, the farm, uh, the. Farmer Labor Union, the Seniors, the Women's Republican Group, the oh, sorry, the, the Young Republicans, the Republican Liberty Caucus, as well as the Veterans. And so today, we because of our because of our panelists, we have spent a lot of time on there. But I also wanted to uh, just mention that there are other affiliate groups as well that are addressing other issues. Um, we are uh, we are coming close to our time, so I would love for everybody to uh, to give to be able to share some final thoughts with regards to where they would like to see the par their party and their affiliate group moving forward with, as well as if people are interested in getting involved with your groups, how they can do that, and do they need to be part of your of, of, specific, of a specific community in order to participate? Well, I'll. S oh, okay. Do you want the question Sorry, before we have, our closing? Okay. Uh, we have one one question. My name is Juan Cervantes, and uh, I've lived in Minnesota for most of my life. Uh, I met a lot of people in Minnesota, and I have found out that most of the people in Minnesota, the important things that are to them is your character, your integrity, and the truth. We expect that from our teachers, our ministers, uh, especially our leaders. So I guess my question to each of you is, uh, especially a minister of youth, how do you explain to your young people that our leader has no character, no integrity, and lies all the time? How, how do you explain? I would like to, each of you to speak to that, please. Okay, I think that we will address all comments within within the closing statements. So if you can focus on yeah, so if you can focus on um, on what you'd like to do with the with the party moving forward. Perfect. And so one of the things that I've been doing in my role as state representative is working as hard as I can to promote the aspects you just brought up: character, integrity, and truth. The Democrat Party should be very concerned because the truth is not something to be concerned about when you're promoting the truth. Now the other side is working through, their strategy is divide and conquer. Divide and cause and, and, and instill fear in people. And we as Republicans in these various groups and many others are using the platforms that of social media and other, uh, the, the, getting out to these events, having booths, having conversations, door knocking, promoting the truth and people's eyes are being opened, people's hearts and minds are being persuaded, and people are seeing the truth and are coming to the, the value set that the Republican Party stands for. And so, uh, you know, th that's one of the things that I'm gonna continue to do, and I'm so thankful for these various groups in helping to get that message out of the truth because that's how people, again, are gonna have their eyes opened. Thanks. Um, so just quickly answer your question there. Um, so what I tell my students is, uh, you know, no matter what they're doing, uh, take the good from that. Good, take the good from what they're doing and, and leave the bad and, and become better than them. Okay, your, your job is to become better, to become smarter, to become more intelligent, to become better than me. That's your job. Don't worry about, I mean, whatever the characters, uh, whatever how the, the, the adults, the current leadership are, Study what they're doing and learn from that. Don't repeat uh, history again. So it, that's that's what I usually tell my students. So um, in regards to what Arm is doing, um, so yeah, so uh, Arm, uh, you can uh, visit our website, uh, and we're also under the MNGOP affiliates tab as well. So you can find more information about us. Um, I'm actually on here on behalf of uh, Robert Yang, who's actually the chair. Um, I'm vice chair, but he's not be able to make it here. But anyway, you can find us on uh, MNGOP um, under the affiliates tab or arm a a r um, a a r m n dot uh, dot com um, and then you can also reach out to me i'm also a candidate 
um, run for state house again too. So that's that's what I'm doing. Um, and I think something that uh, uh, MNGOP can do as well is again, I think somebody mentioned, I think Abdi uh, mentioned that uh, um, the Democrats is really good at marketing and getting the youth getting the youth. And I said this earlier at the Millennial panel the other day. And I said, yeah, I mean, nothing against Johnson or Newberg or anybody else, but you really want to attract the students. I'm a youth minister. I have to talk their language. I have to listen to their kind of music. I have to dress like them just so that they don't see me different from themselves. And if I come in a suit all the time, they're going to go, who's this old man doing? So, you know, so it's important for, no, it's, and on a serious note, uh, it's, it's, it's really important that uh, we, we assume it's ourselves with the, with the students, okay? Listen, you listen to the music, listen how they talk. I mean, you don't have to, the profanity, you don't, it's up to you to decide on that one. But, you know, you get yourself assimilated to the students. I mean, you know, for instance, Democrats, they have Beyonce, Jay-Z, Chance the Rapper. They have all these guys, and then, you know, you take a look at the Republican Party, and you have, you know, Three Doors Down and uh, Glenn uh, uh, Wood and, 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 you know, a Kid Rock, and, and then they go, what? Who's Kid Rock? And, you know, they don't know these guys. So, you know, again, nothing against uh, those who are supporting us already. But then it's just important that we find that cultural uh, assimilation and, and just be familiar with that. And so um, reaching out, uh, that's what we're doing. We're constantly going out, uh, knocking the doors. We're, we're getting involved with MNGOP. So that way the message is out there. And those who are agents who are kind of hiding that they're conservative, but then they're not willing to speak up. Well, there are conserv Asian conservatives out there talking now. So, so uh, I, I thank you for your question. I, I think that it's important to understand that in our political realm, you're going to have people, and, and I don't know, sir, if you fall into this category, but you're going to have someone that no matter what I say to you about Donald Trump, you may think that he's a terrible person because you've made up your mind, or maybe I could change your mind, I'm not sure. But I think that it's important that no matter what, that we look and we understand that as, as our political leaders go, no person is perfect, okay? But you have to look at the total sum of what they're doing. What impact are they making on policy? Are, is our country better off or worse off? And I think that that's what's important, right? There's things that Donald Trump will do that I might disagree with or someone else might disagree with, but is he moving the country in a positive economic position? Absolutely, that's undeniable. But I think that it's important that we teach ourselves, we teach our younger generation that people are fallible, but pick a set of principles that you believe in and move forward with those. That People will always fail you. The only person that won't fail you, depending on your religious position, is God, right? He's infallible. That's the only person that will ever be infallible. If we look um, beyond that aspect and we say, here's the principles that are for us, and we go forward, I think that's the most important thing. Now, in regards to the affiliates and, and going forward, um, I'm kind of a, a person that comes in and I have all these different backgrounds. But I think it's important to just find a way to get plugged in, whatever that way is. So if for you, if you're part of a, a, a group that you feel you want to have people that maybe look a little bit more like you or that represent a group that you're from, go and find that group. But here's the great thing about the Republican Party, and I can tell you this from personal experience. Go to MNGOP.com, type in Where's your closest basic political operating unit? When do they meet? Go there. You will never feel like you're an outcast. People will welcome you with arms wide open. I know because as an activist at the grassroots, we always want people. We don't care where they come from. My experience has been I was able to really, it's a, a wide open buffet. They like new blood. It doesn't matter what you look like. I was chair of my local basic political operating unit. I've been involved at the state level. I was the state chair of the college Republicans, but they want people. So regardless of where you're coming from, go and get plugged in. No one will ever turn you away. And the thing that might shock you the most, if you have maybe heard some bad things about Republicans, go and spend time with these people. They're just like you, right? They have things that are important to them. They have children, they have lives, they have kids, but they're good people. And, and those values do show through. It's a very open community. Even if you think that it might not look like what you're used to, I've never had a bad interaction with activists when I go out to a group that has been bad. It's always been open arms. So I would just encourage people to just do that. Find a group that makes sense for you, but no matter what, get involved and you'll be surprised. Thank you. Well, I do know this, that Minnesota 2018, it will go red. Now, 
under the leadership of a female who's very brave and took up the leadership, Jennifer Carnahan, I uh, really um, enjoy serving and helping the party because of her as well. Um, I do say that is the truth that most of us, especially as the women and as immigrants, I would call myself immigrants, that we feel intimidated getting involved in politics. Now, I, when I finished MAP school, which is great, it gave me um, kind of encouragement in leadership as well. But I encourage everybody to not feel intimidated. Politics works, and that's how you get things to change. If you don't like the way it is, then get involved. And then also, you can also talk to your um, representative and then tell them what is going on. And I also want to say, I encourage everybody, if they're visiting in the Dalwood area, uh, we meet every month at, for, I mean, currently we're meeting at the Dalwood Country Club. And, we welcome, the men are also welcome to become members there. They will be associate, but mostly the primary members will be uh, women. And then that is, our, our, again, in for our group, we educate and hopefully that we can involve, get involved more into the women's politics as well. Right. Well, as far as our Hispanic Republican Assembly group, hi Juan Cervantes, good to see you, buddy. As far as our group goes, we, take, we do take gringos. We like to have some gringos <laughs> as, as part of our membership, and we do. We have, a lot of, we have a lot of gringo supporters, but if you want to find us, go to the Republican Party website, go to affiliates. You have all our contact information. We'd love to have. We meet uh, quarterly, our group. But here's our message to the Republican Party, and it's very simple to our candidates. You've got to do that outreach. This race in November is going to be razor thin, folks. And the new voters for Republicans are these groups right here. Those are the new voters. They haven't made up their mind yet, not all the way. Again, 30% of Latinos in Minnesota in 2016 voted for Donald Trump. It shocked the country. People thought, they were going to go the same way as African Americans, 95% for Hillary. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. So we need every candidate, starting with Jeff Johnson all the way down the ticket, start talking to those folks. You're going to need those votes. And I'm going to be on you to make sure you do that. Uh, just to echo uh, what everybody said, the, the Minnesota GOP website will have all the contact information and uh, and how to get in contact with different affiliates. Um, I, I think you know. I think I can't say it better than anyone has said already. Uh, the Democratic Party has little to no diversity of thought in it. Right? They have a diversity which they've kind of made, you know, has a bad connotation in terms of uh, identity politics. But really. You can't get out of lockstep with anything, whether it's abortion, whether it's in the environment or climate change or anything like that. You have to be in tow. But really, we have, you know, we, you've seen here, we've disagreed on some things, we've agreed on some things. But essentially, the idea is we want people to be more independent, be more empowered, and at the end of the day, make their own life decisions for themselves and not have people, you know, on a pedestal dictating down to them. Um, at the end of the day, I, what I hope to see is definitely see more growth in, in, in people uh, voting Republican. As you said, a third of Hispanics, 25% Asian, voted for, their, for the president. And, and on that question on the president, I'll tell you, I, I love Donald Trump. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's hard for me to say anything bad against him because the guy is fighting for us. At the end of the day, like, like AK said, he's, he's, he's fallible. He's a human being. I say and, and do a lot of dumb things that I you know, hope never comes to light ever. But um, I'm not going to you know, trash the guy who's on the ground working against people who are opening indictments on other people. And, I mean, you see the news every day. Uh, so again, I, I'm glad we have this president in office right now. And I hope to have you know, other representatives join us and, and other representatives who are already there continue the good work that they're doing and you know, see uh, others like us get into the fight. So thank you, guys. I'd like to thank all of our, all of our panelists for doing a wonderful job. Um, thank you guys so much for spending part of your afternoon and thank all of you for spending part of your afternoon with us as well. So um, I think they might be sticking around. So if any of you have questions, sorry, I'm just volunteering your time. Um, if you have any questions that you'd like to, uh, that you'd like to ask them directly, then feel free, feel free to ask. And once again, thank you all very much.